All right, mate, how you doing? Welcome back to another episode of IMO. And in today's video, we're talking about the unbelievable fact that Claudio Ranieri has been sacked as manager of Leicester City less than one season after defying all the odds and winning the Premier League title with them. I can't believe we're talking about this. I mean, people have been saying that football's gone mad for a while. It's not just gone mad, guys. It's gone stark, raving bonkers. Okay, football needs to be locked up in a mental asylum and the key needs to be thrown away forever. I hate to break it to you, but the, the essence of football that we grew up loving and worshipping is dead, all right? It's long gone. We hardly knew ye. There's just so much to talk about in today's video, guys. Uh, before we crack on and get into it, just to quickly explain why we're doing this in the old school IMO setup and not the new live format. You would have seen there wasn't a show this week because I was in Miami. There's not going to be a show next week either. And that's because of some studio issues. Long story short, the studio that we rent to do the show in um, has basically decided just to destroy the studio while I was away. They've, they've opened up a new studio somewhere and it doesn't quite allow us to do the same show. So we're trying to work out what we're going to do with it long term. But in the meantime, I had to make a video to talk about this. I was in Miami. I saw the news. I couldn't believe it that Ranieri has been sacked. I mean, last season he did something, I'm pretty sure there's never been a football achievement like it in the history of football. It was that big an underdog story. I mean, more than Greece winning the Euros when they won it, you know, more than, more than anything I've ever seen and probably has ever happened. No one thought Leicester were going to win the league. It was much more likely they were going to get relegated. But Ranieri, along with a load of players who played very well, particularly Kante, who obviously is the elephant in the room, no longer at Leicester City and their form has dropped. Um, they did really well last season, okay? No one saw it coming. For me, if you outperform your objectives that much, and I'm not saying that he just overperformed, he, he, he redefined the phrase overperforming. If Leicester had finished 12th in the league, the chairman, the fans, they'd have been buzzing. If they'd got in the Europa League spots, they'd been pinching themselves. If they'd got in just the Champions League top four, Ranieri still would have probably won manager of the year. All right, but he didn't just do that. He won the bloody league. He beat the big spending Man United, Man City, Chelsea, Arsenal. Liverpool, Tottenham, all these teams. It's unbelievable what he did and it wasn't just him, but for him to be treated like this is disgusting. Now I know what a load of you are gonna say, those of you that don't agree with me, particularly Leicester fans, you're gonna say, Spencer, look, Leicester were really near to getting relegated, you still are on the edge of the relegation zone, you've not scored a goal in the league in 2017, staying in the league's worth like 100 million quid, so obviously Ranieri's not more important than that. That's what you'll be saying, okay? I disagree. You know why I disagree? Because I don't even think you're having that bad a year this year, to be honest. I think you're playing to about par. Your squad overperformed last year. Do you really think that half your team are actually top class Champions League level footballers? Newsflash, they're not. Wes Morgan is bang average. Robert Hoof was a reject at a load of other clubs. He was sensational last year and he's got that amazing memory and he deserved all the plaudits he got. But this year he's been crashed back down to earth. Jamie Vardy is not the player people thought he was. Riyad Mahrez is the big shock. He was up there with Kante, you know, winning all sort of awards last year. He has been toilet duck this year. Riyad, I'm looking at you. Do it! Mahrez! Oh, Mahrez is rubbish! <laughs> If you look at the Leicester City squad, particularly with the absence of Kante, who is basically going to win the league two years in a row probably, because it looks like he's going to win it for Chelsea as well, it's not that good a squad. I'd say it's more of a relegation candidate squad than a, than a Champions League finishing squad. And let's not forget, they're still in the Champions League. They only lost 2-1 to a team that are challenging Real Madrid and Barcelona for the La Liga title right now, to a team that's won the Europa League three years in a row. They only lost 2-1 away. They got that vital away goal. They're still in that tie. That's more than Tottenham, who aren't even in the Europa League anymore. That's more than Arsenal, who got smashed in their first knockout round of the Champions League. Only Man City are really competing with them on the European stage. So first things first, I'd say, I don't even think Leicester are having that bad a season, all things considered. Pound for pound, they're doing about par, maybe just below. Second of all, I don't know who they're going to bring in that's going to guarantee them safety. I still feel like Ranieri could have turned it round. I think he deserved more time. If you win the league with a team that's a relegation favourite, for me, that earns you two, three years in the job minimum. Apparently, part of the reason he might have been sacked is that some of the players complained to the board and said, you know, we're not liking what Ranieri's doing. He's changing too much essentially he'd lost the dressing room and yes when you lose the dressing room nine times out of ten you do have to make the change just look at Mourinho at Chelsea last season he won the league with them and the next year loads of stuff went on with the doctor etc it wasn't working and they were plummeting they were plummeting down the league table they looked like at one point they might get relegated Mourinho had to go. I was 100% behind that decision, despite what Mourinho had done in the past, because he had lost the dressing room. The difference there was Chelsea were playing so far 
below what their ex expectations were. They were expected to be a Premier League title challenger and they were near the relegation zone. If anyone thinks Leicester should have been challenging for the title again this year, they're crazy. They're mental, okay? They should have been around mid-table, in my opinion. I put a bet on Leicester to get relegated at the start of this season. Because I think Ranieri's a bad manager. Not at all. Because I knew they were going to come crashing back down to earth. And because I knew battling on the extra front of the Champions League was going to take a lot of toll on the squad. And it clearly has. By the way, if you don't believe me, here's proof of the bet I put on before the season start of Leicester to get relegated. Might make some money there. Not a lot, but it proves I could see this coming. But obviously, the Leicester board couldn't see this coming. In my opinion, they should have been more understanding of Ranieri's situation. Situation. Now, next, people will say there's no room for sentimentality in football anymore. It's all about business. It's all about money. You need to stay in the league above all else. Again, I disagree. As someone whose team have been relegated multiple times in my life, I think there is room for sentimentality in football. In fact, I think that's what is the core of the football experience, right? If there was no room for sentimentality, no one would get anyone's name on the back of the shirt. They'd just get money on the back of the shirt. They'd just get a bank balance, right? No one would support the same team all their life. No one would support the team because their dad brought them up to support them. No one would support a team because they're from that area. you just support the team with the best bank balance or whoever's the highest in the league, would you? That's bank balance football that we're led to believe is the future of football. I don't buy it. Sentimentality is at the very heart of why we all love football. We love those moments that make us feel amazing about ourselves. We love the upsets. We love supporting a team through thick and thin. And we should be staying with managers that bloody do something that no Leicester fan would have ever dreamed would have happened in their lifetime. We should be sticking with them through thick and thin as well. My club, West Ham, could have easily got rid of Slaven Bilic based on the performances we had at the start of the season. Thank God they didn't. He didn't deserve it and they stood by him. And we have picked up a little bit since then. Ranieri has done a lot more for Leicester than Billich has done for West Ham, believe me. Of course, if Leicester had got relegated, it would have been a disaster. And people would have pointed a lot of fingers at the people that run Leicester City, right? But they still would have been the team that won the league against all the odds. And they could have stuck with Ranieri and he could have brought them back up again. But I don't even believe he would have taken them down, to be honest. I think he would have turned it round. We'll never know. I did a poll on Twitter asking some of you guys whether you thought Ranieri should have got sacked and it was a pretty convincing result. 86% of you said that no, he shouldn't have been sacked. Just 14% said he should. And I haven't seen that many of you agree on one thing since someone suggested in the comments that I should get a haircut. Spoiler alert, it's still in the awkward phase. The fact of the matter is, I don't think anyone really properly appreciated just how pivotal a part of the team Kante was. Since he's gone, they've been exposed massively. And maybe Ranieri should have spent the money a little bit better in the summer. Maybe he should have brought some people in. Maybe he shouldn't have trusted so many of the players that performed so well last season, like Vardy, like Mares. They haven't been the same. They've let him down, in my opinion. But unless something else went on behind the scenes that we don't know about, like I get the impression something happened at Chelsea with Mourinho, unless something went on, there's no reason that those players should have been turning on their manager. The manager that empowered them to one of the best football memories they're ever going to have. In fact, most of that squad is not going to win any other titles, let's face it, okay? They're not that level of player. But with Ranieri, they did something which will live on in the annuals of football forever, okay? And they've turned on him. They've absolutely turned on him. Unless he's done something behind the scenes we don't know about, I think it's unforgivable, it's unacceptable. They're a rat ship. And the funny thing is, I think in sacking Ranieri, Leicester have gone from being like everyone's favourite second club that all the neutrals were rooting for and were hoping would do well, just like they did last year, to being a club that everyone wants to see go down now. Apart from Leicester fans, I know I want to see Leicester relegated now. I'm going to put it out there. I'm sorry, Leicester fans, but I disagree so much with the way your board have treated Ranieri that I hope you get relegated as a result. What I'm going to say to you people that agree that he should have been sacked is... Next time your club is doing really, really well and you're doing something you've never done before, you're, you're building something, you're having great results, you've got a player that's scoring loads of goals and that player leaves for a bigger club in the middle of your season or the manager leaves because he gets a better offer and you turn on that person, you turn on that manager or player, you need to remember just how hypocritical that will be, okay? Because if you turn on a player when he moves for a better deal or you turn on a manager when he actually does something good in his career and gets an opportunity to climb the ladder and you say that he's a snake and you say that he's betrayed you, well, you remember that you were in favour of sacking Claudio Ranieri the year after he won Leicester the title. I'm sure he had offers in the summer to move on. He had unfinished business at Leicester. He wanted to see how he could get on in the Champions League, an even bigger challenge than what they had to do with last year. And if you think that he should have been sacked, then you don't deserve to have players that are loyal to your club. You don't deserve to have managers that are loyal to your club, because you know what? You aren't loyal to them. And I'm talking to West Ham fans as well. People were very quick to turn on Dimitri Payet. I was one of them, saying, 
saying that he's not loyal, saying he's a snake, etc. because he wanted to move on, right? Let's just remember that loyalty goes two ways, okay? We have to be loyal to our own. If we're going to turn on Pyatt like that, we've got to be loyal to our players when they're not performing, all right? We've got to be loyal to Bilic if he has a bad spell. And I'm talking to all football fans right now. Now, sentimentality and loyalty can obviously only go so far. I think Arsene Wenger at Arsenal has well and truly worn his out now after years and years of what some people would say as hitting objectives, I would say underperforming personally. So after a while, you have got to make a change. But in my book, Ranieri had got nowhere near to wearing out the loyalty he'd earned in winning Leicester the title. I'm sickened by it. And if this is a sign of things to come, I think we're going to see more FC United and Manchester's. I think we're going to see more AFC Wimbledon's. Teams set up, teams that drop down to the lower leagues because they want to get away from the football business. You know, Arsenal, they're not Arsenal FC, they're Arsenal PLC. Well, Leicester, you're doing the same thing now. You're following the money, not following the hopes and dreams of football fans. Shame on you. I'm sure a load of you disagree with me. I'm sure a load of you are going to mug me off in the comments. Well, that's why it's IMO. I say my opinion, you say yours. Let me know in the comments what you're thinking about this. Maybe you think Ranieri should have been sacked. I want to hear why. Because if you just support football for a bank balance, for results above all else then you're in the wrong game, in my opinion. The people in charge of football, not just the people in charge of clubs, but the people in charge of the organisations that run football are becoming nothing more than bankers who pretend to love football, okay? They are milking the cow that is football until there's nothing left but the withered old carcass of beef that they take straight to the butchers and they sell. And guess what? That's when we get to have it. That's when we tuck into it. That's what they're doing to our game. They're killing it. I know I'm going off on a tangent, but I feel like this is one of those issues which really brings a lot to light and shows you just how much football has changed and shows you just how much it's become a business and it has become cold and heartless. And don't get me wrong, I understand the principles of business. I'm all for them in the business world. The point about sport, the reason we love it, the reason I make content about it and have dedicated my whole life to it is because it's bigger than that. It's not just about money. It's about how it makes you feel. It's about what you learn from it, what you can apply from sport to real life and the sort of man it makes you or woman it makes you. And the people in charge of sport, the people in charge of clubs right now, they do not inspire me. I do not want to be those people. I do not want to get into the line of work those guys are in. They're money makers. They're not sport lovers. I feel sorry for Anieri. I think you're a legend. Best of luck in the future. Drop a like on this video if you've enjoyed my rant, if you maybe agree with it. I'm sure if you disagree with it, you'll let me know. Uh, I'll keep you updated with what's happening with the IMO Live situation. I'm going to keep making videos like this as and when I feel the need to. Anyway, guys, I'll see you next time. Until then, don't go changing.